thing. So, if y'all stood by each other, bring the fathers back into the house. We need them. Some of our sons, yes, there's a ruthless world out there. They're killing our babies. They're killing our babies. But I want you fathers to be a stand-up father. See, you can't say one thing and do another. We used to beg my father to cheat on the um, income tax so we could get financial aid. <laughs> we said, Daddy, so-and-so's doing it. And what they say to you back then? If you see him jumping off a bridge, you're gonna jump off a bridge? So y'all need some of that old mother wit wisdom from back in the day. Your parents said, does money grow on trees? Do I own Con Edison? Turn off them lights. Y'all five years old walking around with iPhones and I have a flip phone. I mean, y'all better be glad I'm not your mother. None of y'all would have no iPhones, I'm telling you. Because you're losing sight. Now, I'm all for technology. Don't get me wrong. The word of God is being spread. But you're losing sight. Because guess what? The enemy, who is the prince of the airwaves, we are going to have a massive type of um, terrorist Cyber terrorism, heard from the mouth of the prophet, it's coming. You better learn how to memorize some numbers. Hey, in you better not work. fall apart when the phone don't work. Hey. Let it be a blackout. My son, the oldest one, hey. uh, not, I can't do nothing. My phone ain't working. Yeah. Boy, you better go sit down. So, oh, another one. Okay, but you young. You were born this generation. But he's a Pac-Man baby. You know, he didn't always have that. You know, they take, they take the car, get some money. No, I got to put some money in there. You don't just get money. simple things. You do not have to give your kids all the riches in the world. Because what profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? When Christmas comes, I was a single mother longer than I was a married mother. Been married twice. My first marriage was 100 years to the date after my grandmother. All the women in my family got married more than once. And my father said, girl, you didn't have a chance. And it, you know, that might have been a generational crisis. Same day, 100 years later. And I was like, what? Why didn't you tell me I would have skipped that marriage? But, <laughs> but you know, you want to do what you want to do because God had my real husband for me waiting for me and he made me wait. See, we all did some penance. So I had to wait 12 years, 12 long years for my husband. In my prime, all my 30s, no man. But, but when he sent him, he sent the apple of my eye. And I'm telling you that because sometimes we say what we want, but we're not willing to pay the price for it. You know? And so I, I talked to you about family. Come this holiday, if you don't have the money to buy everything, you no, know we're doing this year. We're putting names in the hat because we because I don't have no grandchildren. We're putting names in the hat. If you can't afford it, don't get broke. You know what? Make chocolate chip cookies with the kids. When is the last time you sat with one of your children, both boy and girl, not discriminating, both should learn. Make some, make cookies for one another. You think that's corny, but listen, why are you getting in debt and you can't pay your rent? You won't have a big Christmas, but y'all won't get the bitch to know this next That's silly, that's silly. So, let me just tell you the lesson of this, this whole talk. First, love your family. Don't be looking down in a coffin to be the last time you've seen someone. Forgive them. Forgive them because it's more of a burden to walk around with that hate. I didn't say if someone did something bad to your child to let them in that child's presence. No, that's foolishness. But somewhere you gotta find a place to forgive them. And if they're an active perpetrator, you better talk to someone. Something needs to be done. Because when you're not looking, they're hurting somebody else. So the lesson of the story is that when an inattentive father, even if he's a godly man, it can lead to family feuds, shame, and vengeance. Doesn't mean he wasn't a good man, but he turned his back on an important thing. Maybe he was shamed. But sometimes when you're called to be a parent, you gotta put on your big boy panties and big girl panties and do what you gotta do. You can't turn, you're not a child anymore. When you bring babies into this world, guess what? You are secondary. That child is primary. That's not, it's, that's not why we're against adolescents. No one's against Every time a baby comes, it's, it's a gift of God. And in our community, we need people. But when you bring them in, it's an awesome responsibility. So maybe even I know some 30-year-olds that don't know what to do with a baby. And I know some 18-year-olds who got more sense than them. An unhealed family wounds leads to revolt. You got that child that won't go to church. You don't know what happened to them. That's right. You don't
don't know, maybe they're tired of you looking, you look like your dad, you stupid, you ain't never gonna be nothing. You can't tell your child that. Because if you, and if you say this, and this is one thing I said to my sons, a lot of women, I've heard them say this, black men ain't blank. So you telling your son they're not that. I didn't tell my sons that. And I was mad at my ex-husband, I was mad at some people, like, but I told them you're always gonna be somebody, you're smart, and you're God's gift. Because it's not what you do all the time, it's what you say and what you do. Leaders need godly advisors whose purpose is to serve God. So be careful who's whispering in your ear. See, God will always confirm his word in his Bible or he'll send someone to confirm that word. Don't have someone talking mess to you about your family. And once again, the time of sorrow is too late to heal some women. You see, yes, if we love the Lord, we'll go on from here and be together. But there's a life here. Don't forget about the life here and what we have to do. These babies need us. And it's good to have a holiday dinner. If y'all can't even have, you have fried chicken wings and some yams, you can't afford turkey, it's all right. It is not the food. That's right. It's the meal. It is the ambience. It is the atmosphere that we're together. Start something new. I started saying, making everybody say what they're thankful for. They get mad at me and they're ready to eat. I said, everybody got to go around and say what you're thankful for. Because there were some people who don't have food. There are many, and, you, and listen, don't judge a book by its cover because a lot of people have pride. You know, in the old days, people drive around the Cadillac and they're living in a cold water flat, okay. eating beans, one piece of ham hock in the corner of a cornbread, but they're driving their Cadillac. So you can't judge a book by its cover. You don't know what people are going through. And Jesus Christ is the tie that binds all of us. Not only are you in your natural family, but we are in a new family. We are adopted heirs of Christ, covered by the blood, because of the blood. That's my brother. God is my father. And each and every one of us are brothers and sisters, because now we are brought in. And so we gotta start treating each other like that. Not just your natural family. In this world, the master family, if you've got beef with someone, go to them, go to the pastor. Don't blast it on Facebook. Because we are ambassadors of Christ. What we do speaks about us. Because if we act ill on Facebook, who's gonna wanna come to this church? There is a plan and purpose. God has a vision for this church. This is the church for people that other places, they may not want you, let's be real. You know, some people don't want us speaking in tongues, falling out, delivering people, vomiting, carrying on. Whatever deliverance is, we got to do what God calls us to do. There are some places that, no, nope, it's 10 o'clock. It's the right hand of fellowship. No, 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 uh, no, Holy Spirit up in here today. We got to go on to what we got to do at 1015. But in here, the Holy Spirit reigns free. And he will deliver you from things. But you got to be a family member. You got to stick to one. You don't have to like everything. But there are rules in the family. The rules are that you don't talk mess outside of the family. That's See, right. that's something that this generation doesn't know. But in the old days, you did not talk mess about your family. You can whisper to your sister, but you better not go out in the street and talk about your family. But this is your family, too. There are ties that bind us. And those same ties will keep us. But we have to be loyal first and foremost to the Lord and first and foremost to Jesus Christ. And I tell you, if you do it here, he will continue to bless your family. I rebuke any curse from any of our ancestors. I rebuke it because we are the curse breakers. We are the chosen ones. We are the ones that God put in this peculiar ministry. We are a peculiar people. But we are people who've seen miracles. We are people, the people we pray for will get healed. Money will come from places you can't even imagine. Get ready for whatever you desire. Live a godly life. Do as good as you can. If you're having trouble, talk to one of us, right? There's a reason why we are the elders of the village, because there's probably, between most of us that are over 50, and nothing that we haven't seen. You can't go by how we look. You would be surprised. You would be surprised. <laughs> but the, the issue is we are transparent in things in our life because we want you to see. Because nobody, we struggle with things every day. But yes, when you are born again, when you are covered in the blood, something has got to change. 
something has got to change inside. So Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the covering that every man in this place will be. I thank you for the fathers that they will be. I thank you for the young and the old. I thank you that when there is not a young man, there will be an older man. There will be an elder of the village to step in and help. I thank you that as women, we will be strong, but we will be loving. We will respect what God has put in our life. We will respect the covering in our life. And if you have mutual respect for one another, there's no worries. You never call stupid. You never curse one another. You never disrespect. If you're angry, take a tasty cake break and walk out the room. There is a plan and purpose for all of our lives. We thank you for our babies that are going to go on and do great things. Father, I thank you for all the people that you want to vote because we are not helpless creatures. We have some control of our destiny. We have control of the things that God has purposed in our heart. But most importantly, we thank you for the family that we are. We thank you that we're coming into a new generation, a generation where there will be no abuses. I call it out now, what is loosed in heaven is loosed on earth. There will be no more abusers in our family. Father, you will take care of all that is not right. We'll have no more Amnoms, Absaloms, and Tamars in our midst. Oh, Father, I thank you for this word you put in my heart. I pray your people who, who have heard from you, not from me, who have heard from you, will hark on to you and take a new step in a new direction because the blood of Jesus is thicker than water. Amen. 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 Glory.